Reggie, good morning to you. Good morning. I love your story and I can't <laughs> wait for you to share it with everyone at home. Um, let's take it back to the age of 80. Yeah. Um, you grew up on a council estate in London. Yeah. Um, your dad wasn't around. You've been excluded from school and had a bit of trouble with the law. And then there was a turning point. What was it? So at 17 years old, um, so I signed a two-year football contract at 16. Mm -hmm. And halfway through that contract, I didn't want to play football anymore because my dad had just passed away. Mm -hmm. And that put even more financial strain on my family. So when I decided that I didn't want to play football anymore, because football's all eggs in one basket, I had to find another way to take my family out of the environment that we grew up in. And because I didn't really focus on education, I didn't know if I was good at maths, English or science, mm -hmm. I said, what way can I find out the skills and qualities people had to amass their wealth? Mm -hmm. And that's when I decided to research and Google wealthiest areas in London. And I made a list of places, Kensington and Chelsea, Bishop's Avenue, and three other places. And I went there and started asking the questions. So that is literally what you did. You yeah. went to these areas and you literally started knocking on doors. Yeah. And one woman took a chance on you, yeah. not only opened the door, but let you into her home yeah. to give you the benefit of her and her husband's experience. Who were they? What did they tell you? So it was the Price family. I knocked on the door and initially she was speaking through the intercom and said, is this part of a school project? Mm -hmm. I said, no, I'm literally doing it off my own back. I just want to know what skills and qualities you had so that I can take that for myself, go back to where I'm from, use it, and hopefully become as wealthy as you to live in Sarah. So she invites me in and halfway through our conversation, her husband walks in and his name was Quinton Price. So Quinton was the head of Alpha Strategies at BlackRock, which is an investment management firm. Mm -hmm. And he was just so welcoming. He took time to speak to me, was giving me great advice. And he invited me to BlackRock about two weeks later for an insight day. Mm -hmm. So I was in college at the time, but then he invited me to an undergraduate insight day. And that's when I was exposed to find, that was my first time in the city and I only lived 25 minutes away from the city. Mm -hmm. And from there, I enjoyed my day and he invited me back for a week long work experience in the summer, mm -hmm. completed that. And I had a meeting with him, my mum and another mentor of mine called Nathan. And that's when I asked him, okay, Quinton, I really enjoyed my time here. What do I have to do to work in the investment management sector? And he encouraged me to go to university and study something finance related to give me the best chance at becoming the most competitive candidate. So apprenticeships, a degree, you're now working at legal and, and general in a yeah. successful role there. You know, at, at 23, you could think, I've done my bit, <laughs> I'm earning a good living, I'm on my way up. Yeah. But you're actually giving back and you're talking about mentors that you had. And now you're very keen for, you know, young boys and girls who are we watching at home now to have the same kind of opportunity and drive that you had. Yeah. So tell us about your um, mentoring, your yeah, giving back. Definitely. I, I personally feel like I could just stop where I am, but it's mainly the visibility side of things because mm -hmm. I just feel like people that are coming up in this generation, especially from socially challenged backgrounds, if they don't have the visibility to say, I can become a banker or a lawyer or anything really, mm -hmm. they can't aspire to be that. So what I'm trying to do is just give them that visibility to say, you know, you can do it if you want to do it mm -hmm. and giving them the soft skills and the capabilities for them to go into that sector and do it. So I am now the group chair of ACCA Emerging Talent, which is helping undergraduates to become more competitive. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of mentoring in a youth organization in East London called the Victory Youth Group. I have my own mentoring called K3D, mm -hmm. again, helping sixth form students and undergraduates to just become more competitive. And I also travel to schools and colleges and universities up and down the country, you know, sharing my story, but also speaking about social issues that we face and how to improve it. Yeah. Reggie, what would be your one piece of advice to any teen who has perhaps fallen out of the education system, has perhaps had you know, a brush with the law, doesn't have role models? Mm. What would you say to them? I know it sounds quite cliche, but I would just say you can actually do anything you want to do. And that's coming from someone who only started studying properly at the age of 17, 18, mm -hmm. and is now working in, in the city of London. Mm -hmm. So one thing I would just say is you can do anything you want to do. Just keep your head down, have good people around you. And if you can, find someone that is a mentor or an accountability partner that can help you to get to where you are. And you know, for me, it worked. I had Quinton and I've met many more people along the way. And, if I can be the next Quinton for someone else or someone else can go and find their Quinton, then you know, that will be, make the world a difference. I just feel like mentoring and providing that visibility for the younger generation makes a world of difference. Yeah. And it's never too lot late to stop and make that change. Reggie, it's been an absolute pleasure Thank to meet you, so you this morning. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming in and Thank sharing you. your story. It really is inspirational, not just for teens, but for adults out there <laughs> as well. Uh, Reggie Nelson.